thanks to Tots. You can find this guy at your front door while still following the rules. Here's a look at the brand new Trick or Treat Studios Trick or Treat Sam Six Scale Deluxe Figure. Trick or Treat Studios is proud to present the officially licensed Trick or Treat Deluxe Six Scale Sam figure. This posable figure stands approximately and features 30 plus points of articulation. It includes burlap sack head, unmasked head, four additional hands, holly ho bar, razor lollipop, bitten lollipop, trick or treat bag, light up flaming jack o' lantern, and sidewalk base. Fully clothed in screen accurate costume with soft fleece onesie featuring patchwork details and burlap and rope mask materials. The sidewalk base features artificial grass and storm gray detail. Arrives in a beautiful collector's box with flip back window display. Now, just before we look at this treat from Trick, let's grab the tape measure first and see how tall Sam stands. Speaking of Trick or Treat, I'd like to thank the folks over at Trick or Treat Studios that did provide the sample of the brand new Trick or Treat Deluxe one six scale Sam figure that we could have a look in this review. The figure, by the way, FYI, is available right now over on their site for $199.99. Or if that's a little too high for your budget, you can also go the route of an interest-free installments starting at around $18.05. I'll provide the links down below if you guys are interested to get this one for yourself. In the meantime, though, back to Sam. He stands about nine and a quarter inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 23 and a half centimeters tall. And sharing the city streets on Oh Hallow's Eve season, let's slide over the Sam that we're about to have a look at and bring in the earlier looked at 1978 Nick Castle Michael Myers, produced also by the folks over at Trick or Treat Studios. I'm sure the question right away would be asked, is Sam of the right height? If you look online, most people quote Sam at being five inches. In fact, some of them actually even say he's about four foot three. Nick Castle's Michael Myers actually stood at five foot ten. So if you're looking at the comparisons of the sizes, I think it's about right. Sam may have been just a little bit shorter than what he's presented here as a six scale figure, but I think he's still pretty close when you compare the two. On to now the figure's accessories. The first thing I'm happy to report is the fact that Sam actually comes included with a display stand. And though I don't feel any adjustable neck was really required, Sam stands fine on the sidewalk that we get right here. It's a very decorately detailed looking display base. You've got yourself the sewer grate down below here. Now I have seen some images online where some of the sewer grates weren't finished. I'm sure you probably could reach out to Tots and let them know. You might be able to get a replacement that way. This one actually has been painted well. You can see the darker reset sections of the grate. I wonder if Pennywise is living down there. And of course you've got the curb of the sidewalk and in between the curb and then a sidewalk, you get yourself sort of a grassy knoll. The grass itself is actually clearly artificial. I mean, to feel it, it feels artificial. But to look at it, I think it actually does look like fairly realistic grass. It's a little on the brighter green side, but I think the fact that they actually took the time to add, add real foliage rather than actually just sculpting this and painting this in place, I think is really a nice touch. I also appreciate the fact that on the sides, they did finish this. So, of course, instead of just having a, a non-finished, non-sculpted, non-painted sides to the base, they actually did take the time to sculpt it and paint it. I think that's a really nice touch. I think, really, it's a good touch to also include the fact that they had the sidewalk added. Because, of course, as a company, they could have easily just released Sam with all the accessories we're, of course, about to have a look at. But the fact they took the time and added this, I think, is already well worth the price point that they're asking for this figure. And, of course, as already mentioned, Sam, you can easily take him and put him on top of the display stand. He doesn't really need the adjustable neck. Normally, six scale figures would always have gone the route of an adjustable neck, but what it would leave behind is very much an unsightly hole on the top of it, and I honestly don't think the figure even needed it. The fact that he shows well on the base is all the more important to me, but I do like the fact that they took the time to include display base like that. Now, of course, some of the other things that come included with this are things that are specific to the movie. Things you'll recognize right away, for example, is the pumpkin. The pumpkin, for example, is most notably featured on the poster artwork of Trick or Treat, or it's also fe featured in the actual uh, room, one of the rooms of Mr. Krieg, where he first comes in. He sees, sort of sees the writing all on the walls. You've got this flaming pumpkin in the background. The pumpkin, I will say, from an accessory standpoint, first of all, it does actually have a button cell battery compartment, which the batteries are already installed. The only thing I did actually do was remove the restriction of plastic. There's a little plastic clip here. I just popped that out. And of course, then you from there, you can light it up. 
The pumpkin lights fairly well, in fact. Looks to be like almost a little tea light inside, and it flickers the way naturally that a pumpkin would be flickering, whether you have this sort of extension of flame on the top of it or not. I do really like the way they've actually handled the, the light, the flame here. You got darker orange down below here and more to the base of where the pumpkin is. And then from there, it sort of leaves behind a, a trail of yellow. And it kind of is a really nice the way they've actually painted that. I like the flickering effect. It does look quite good. I will say, though, like the pumpkin comes across a little too dark. I kind of wish it was a little bit more orangey than what we would, of course, what we would see in the movie. But the fact that they would take the time to include this, I think, is, again, a really nice touch. We're just going to turn this off so I don't drain the batteries. Going to put that to the side. The figure also comes in clue with this sack. The sack seems of a same similar burlap that he has for his mask. Although in this case, it looks like he's been dragging onto the ground. A lot of stuff maybe leaving behind. Well, it looks like there's quite a lot of staining on the bottom of it. This has probably been dragging across mud. But of course, you've got all the staining of red. So he's probably been carrying more than just candy and treats inside. It is tied to the top. So of course, you know, there's nothing really inside of it. It's just an empty bag. But it sort of folds in on itself and folds well enough. I probably will find myself opening this up, putting a few little things in there, just kind of beef the bag up. I think most of the time when he's dragging, he is dragging something inside, but not enough to fill up an entire bag. He does also have hands to hold the bag. Uh, if you did want to, for example, have him displayed with the bag being held on this side, he comes with a gripping hand for that. The hand f does a fair enough job of actually holding the bag in place. You sort of have to just kind of pinch the top of the bag and then tuck it in between his fingers and his thumb. Uh, the only thing I would say, though, about the bag is, let's just grab the figure for right now. The hands are, first of all, quite easy to remove. Just going to hold onto the forearm and just pop it right off the post. And then just from there, pop the new hand then in place. The only thing I will say, though, is like the bag, I feel like it's not long enough. I would have liked if it was just a little bit longer. I might... You know, I guess you could probably just have the hand a little bit lower down. Because in the movie, it looks like he really is kind of dragging a lot of it really behind him. But I love the idea that they included the bag. The figure also comes included, but I guess while we're on the topic of hands, he does come with relaxed hands straight out of the box. If you can see it for a, se for a second, it does have some really nice coloring. And all the hands, I will say, also have this additional sort of clear coat finish that they've added to the ends of the fingers. I don't know if he's actually been licking his fingers or it's just like left behind of maybe like the melting candy. Like obviously if he's going to be carrying around lollipops and treats, he's probably got all that on his fingertips as well. So it comes with like the relaxed hands. He's already got, of course, one on this side. The figure also comes included with a slightly more gestured hand to show you the difference between the two. You can kind of see like the fingers are a little bit more in a wavier formation versus like the more relaxed flat fingers that he has on the other one that we started with. But again, like to look at them, if you can see, they have possibly blood, but it also looks like it's probably just candy and like debris left behind from eating all the sweets that he's doing that night. The figure also comes included more specifically than to this side of the figure's body. He comes with gripping hands of desired widths. Uh, one hand is specifically designed for holding, say, like the lollipop, which we'll talk more about in a moment. The other hand, literally the other hand, does actually have one a little more of a bigger grip to then hold the Holly Ho candy bar, which we see also in the movie as well. Very nicely sculpted here. It's got, of course, the blade on the end of it, so don't get too close to it. And judging by the fact that there's some blood down the bottom of it, it looks like he's already met up with Mr. Krieg. I do really like the way they've sculpted this. And of course, yeah, you can take the candy bar. The fingers at least. Now this finger, well, I will say, like the fingers, this one right here is pretty close to the thumb and you can't widen it. So you'll just have to do it on your own to kind of wedge that in between the fingers and the palm, just like, just like that. Probably going to be the way I'm going to be displaying the figure, although obviously the temptation is there all, always all the time to display a Sam figure with his trademark lollipop. Now he does have two variations of lollipop in both the cases. You can see it's sort of using a translucent orange plastic, of course, printing the face of the jack o lantern on the front of it. And he comes with two variations of it. I do like these, and I'm obviously really tempted to display the figure with this. I think I might even be, speaking of tempted, I might find myself picking up another Sam for, for the obvious reasons of all the accessories he comes included with. But not to mention the biggest thing is the fact he comes with a swappable head sculpt. I would really like to display this guy on my shelf with both the burlap sack and then the unmasked head that we see a little bit later into the movie. So anyways, he does have those. And of course, you can use then the other hand that's provided and just take the end of the lollipop and fit that easily in place. Again, if we wanted to change the other hand, let's just take the bag out for right now. Just, again, we've already looked at the steps already, but let's just remove the hand from the end of provided post on the end of the forearm. Just pop that off like that. Pop in then the new hand. And the hands are also very easy to change as well. 
Just want to make sure though, of course, when you are putting it onto the figure's body that you're putting in with enough pressure that the hand, there we go, gives you a nice little satisfying snap. So that's a good way of displaying the figure as also as well as the fact he does have the lollipop and two of them, two of them. The last thing the figure also comes included with, of course, is the unmasked head sculpt, which is fantastic. I love the way they've sculpted this, and I think equally well, I like the way they've also painted this. He's got the recessed triangular eyes, of course, like he has in the movie, the little stitchings off the side and down the side of his face, and he also has it on the sides of his mouth as well. Like, though, in the movie, you can open up the mouth, which is a really nice touch that they included. Uh, the only thing about it, though, is just to bring the jaw probably a little bit further down than I would have normally had the figure displayed. You can see he's got tiny, tiny little teeth here, and he also has the inside of his mouth painted in red. He has that also down below here at the bottom of his jaw, but though so meeting in the middle, he's got what's left behind of the plastic. And while I think they've done such a great job here and here, I wish they have actually would have finished it in the middle and colored it completely in red. The only reason why I say that is if you did want to have, for example, the mouth completely open, from a far enough distance away, it sort of does look like his tongue. But looking closer at this, I really wish that they could have painted the, the rest of the plastic down below in burgundy. Because for me, I'll probably just want to kind of have the figure displayed with the mouth open about that far. Just not revealing some of the, the left behind unpainted plastic. Other than that though, it's just a great looking head sculpt. Which we will of course be putting onto the body of Sam in a moment. I just want to again give you guys a quick sneak peek at what that looks like before we do it. So getting a closer look at Sam... Let's for right now at least remove the lollipop. We're going to put that to the side. And again, like, just want to draw your attention. I don't know why I'm so interested in the fact he does have sort of wet fingers, but I think that's such a neat little additional touch that they didn't have to add in the first place. But I did, though, want to obviously start the review with looking at his burlap sack as what we normally see Sam and being. And of course, majority of the movie wise, he's looking like this. It's not really until like the finale when he's battling Mr. Creek that you see, of course, first the, the mask pulled off. And he's shot, of course, and then, of course, he puts the mask back on. This is an unfinished, or I should say a finished, non-ripped mask. And just to spin this around, you can kind of see, like, really good use of... Like, the material itself does feel like burlap. Now, one thing they did do smartly... We have looked at six scale, but we have looked at Sam figures before that had clothing. And usually what was always the case, they usually would put it over top of this head sculpt, this one right here. The only downside though is it, is it never gives you a fun, fully, fully finished circular head. It usually just sort of conforms to the shape of the head that's underneath it. But I like that they actually just took like the shape of essentially a ball and they wrap the burlap mask around it it does give you a completely finished looking mask of course with the button button eyes there on the front some nice additional stitching that he has so sort of for a makeshift mouth and he's got some additional stitching up the front he's got the tied up knot down below here of course to keep the burlap sack mask in place I will say, though, like it does look fantastic, but I do think it's a little too light. In the movie, it tends to be a little bit more of a brownish color that he has right here. I'm sure customizers could probably go in there and just slightly stain the burlap, giving it a little bit more of a tan look than the lighter color we get right here. But despite that, I think it's such a great looking head sculpt and still really torn as to really which way I would want to display the figure. Really compelled, really, really interested to get a second one of these guys so I can actually have two displayed on my shelf. But like with the head being as it is, you can still get full articulation for the head. So there's going to be a ball joint we'll, we'll see, and I'll see more in a second. But it does really allow for full freedom when it comes to moving the head back and forth. It doesn't seem as limited as perhaps I thought it may have been. As for, of course, the rest of the outfit, he does have the onesie pajamas. Very dirty. He's got a few little stains there across it, a couple little patches sewn also in place. And he also has the footed feet down below here. The footed feet do sit bag baggy. Obviously, they should, as the way it would be in the movie. Uh, he does have, of course, f uh, actual soles on the bottoms of his pajamas. That's nice to see. At the feet, you may find yourself periodically as you're moving this figure around, sort of just kind of the put the feet of the figure or the six scale body underneath you might just find yourself sort of readjusting the feet from time to time i like that it sits baggy but like you might find yourself just sort of adjusting it making sure like because sometimes it may kind of be like this and you may just find yourself needing to adjust it just a little bit i don't know if i would really want to go this extent but i would maybe put a little bit of glue maybe on the bottom of it, at least only just his heel if you glued that in place then of course the rest of it would still be baggy but it would be like shifting around on you 
overall though, I'm really, really happy with how the, the actual onesie turned out here. Of course, you got the little pocket there on the back. This would drop down, of course, if Sam needed to go use the restroom. And it is actually a Velcro closure, so you could open this up if you really wanted to. And there is, of course, just the standard six scale body, which is kind of a newer body, really, for Trick or Treat Studios. They tend to use the more larger scale adult side figures. But I think this is probably going to be the same body that they're going to be using for the Trick or Treaters from Season of the Witch, which we will be looking at in an upcoming review. As for removing of the head, let's just hold on to the body and just easily pop the head off the ball. The only thing I will say though is just be careful of the buttons. You want to kind of hold on to it from the side and just sort of wiggle it back and forth till finally it frees itself from the ball joint post. The few couple of times that I've done this though, I've been a little bit worrisome as to whether I pulled the ball joint. Well, it's a dumbbell, so you've got one ball joint here, one ball joint here. Pulling it too abra abrasively, I feel like I was almost going to be removing the ball joint altogether. Then we're going to go ahead and take now the unmasked head sculpt for Sam, which I will say finishes off nicely. You've got the con continuation of the same sort of coloring of the neck as it is for the head, so I like the consistency there. It doesn't look unfinished, for example. And we're going to go ahead then and take the head. Now, I did have to heat this up a little bit with a hair dryer just to soften the plastic up just a little bit. Because the first initial time that you're getting this onto the ball post, it doesn't seem like it fits all the way on there. You may have a little bit of an easier time than I did. But like, for example, I would say like probably heat this up just a little bit. Now, the plastic just before, of course, me hitting the record button has cooled a little bit. So I'm going to have to put that in a little bit more pressure than it was what I was hoping to do. You can see, though, how good the head sculpt looks, and I will say as a credit to Trick or Treat, I like that they actually did continue the sculpt down below here. Though nothing would have been more jarring by having a really nice looking sculpted head, really well painted, but then have it unfinished in the neck area. And yeah, sure, while the arms are unfinished, I like at least like the neck looks continuous to the rest of the sculpting for the head sculpt. And again, like it has all the same retained articulation. The only thing about it, though, is like the head does frequently pop off. So I'm going to have to heat that back up if I'm looking to display the figure like this. Of course, it still has the opening and closing mouth. Just a really good head sculpt on this one. Still, though, I feel I feel like for right now, as I only have the one, I'm probably just going to be displaying the figure with the burlap sack mask. But there's definitely a temptation to get a second one of these because I hate the idea of putting a head sculpt this good back in the box. For the articulation on Sam, going back once, I guess, back to the head sculpt, it is going to be on that dumbbell ball joint. So again, you've got the ball joint right here, and then you, though, can't see it. There's a secondary ball joint right there. So the head still moves up and down, back and forth. As for the arms themselves, I did notice, like, the arms initially, again, the out of the box were really tight. Not so much moving them forward and back, but moving the arms outward, I really had to kind of force a little bit of that till finally the joint gave way. And of course, from there, you can easily then move the arms forward, you can move the arms back, and you move the arms out. The figure has also seems to be a swivel in the bicep, a double hinge on the elbow, and then the hands, whatever hands you decide to display with Sam, do rotate all the way around and hinge back and forth. Upper torso is on a ball joint. It's a little loose on my figure, but that may not be the case across the board. The figure also has a waist swivel as well. The legs do split out. Take the legs and move them forward, you can move them back. There's a swivel also at the top of the thigh. A double hinge, it seems to be the case. Like, I can feel there's a, there seems to be a joint right there, and there seems to be a joint right there, so it leads me to believe there's a double hinge joint working behind the scenes. And, of course, he does have foot articulation as well. The only thing about it, though, is, again, like, you might find yourself sort of having to readjust the booties every single time you get this guy on display. Let's just bring the feet. Like, this one right here. I don't know why. It's, there we go. Just get that all fixed up. And, yeah, it's a nice, nice-looking Sam. I'm so glad to, first of all, see... The fact that Trick or Treat Studios are continuing doing their six scale figures because they're doing this this line so well with already what we've gotten with the Michael Myers. Let's just oh I just dropped his head sculpt. Gonna have to retrieve that a little bit. You know what? Let's just put this head back in place for right now. While they've been doing such a great job, I'm gonna have to retrieve the head. While they've been doing such though a great job on the six scale Michael Myers, I'm glad to see that we're getting a little bit of love for one other mascot that follows around people during the Hallow's Eve season, and of course that's Sam. Sam turned out to be a great looking figure. He's got lots of accessories going for him, lots of different means and dis displaying options. The fact he does have the two lollipops, he does have the the, the candy bar, multiple hands, not to mention the pumpkin, not to mention of course the burlap sack, and the fact that they would take the time, above all that, to still include a display stand for displaying the figure. It's definitely, if you're a big fan of Trick or Treat, Trick or Treat, might want to venture over to Trick or Treat Studios and pick this figure up right now.
retrieving the rolled away head sculpt, although I'm sure if I just left it, it probably would have found its way back to Sam's body anyways. As Mr. Krieg would also discover, blowing off limbs for Sam doesn't stop him, it only manages to slow him down. You know, while we're on the topic of blowing off limbs, are we on the topic of blowing off limbs? While we are on the topic of blowing off limbs, definitely there's potential, I think, on the table for Trick or Treat Stews to release this guy again as a version 2. Still sticking with the stellar sculpt that we get with this initial release. I love the look of this Sam. I think there's definitely potential to release a version 2 Sam that has the battle damage head sculpt, that has sort of those pumpkin entrails down the side of his eye, a blown off arm. Why not include that? And also the burlap sack. Why not have one that has the ripped away mouth area that he has while he's tussling around with Krieg? I definitely think there's a version 2 opportunity on the table if that's something a trick-or-treat studios would consider. I know most companies are always considering how they can get the most mileage out of their mold. And speaking as a big fan of Trick or Treat, the movie, I would love to be able to see Trick or Treat Studios release a version to Sam. Would that be something that you guys would be interested in? And how interested are you to get your hands on this version of Sam? He is currently available as of right now over on Trick or Treat Studios. Whether the supplies will last, though, you may want to jump on this guy right away. He's $199.99, which under $200, I think it's still a good price for considering you get a superposable figure with two alternate head sculpts. You get the flaming pumpkin, you get all the accessories we looked at in this review and he also comes included with a sidewalk display stand which i really don't even think the company needed to include all the other things that i already mentioned was already more than enough for me wanting to get a sam six scale figure and I think just having a sidewalk display stand was the icing on the cake. But again, if you guys are interested and like to get this one for yourself, it's $199.99 over on their website. Or you can also go the route of interest-free installment plans from around $18 and up. And again, if you guys are interested, you can click the link down below in the video description. Big thank you once again to the folks over at Trick or Treat Studios that did provide the sample of the brand new Trick or Treat Sam Deluxe six scale figure that we could have a look at this review. If you guys enjoyed this video, I want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you certainly do want to stick around for more Tots reviews, FYI, why we will be looking at the Halloween 3 season of the Witch Trick or Treaters. That review will be coming up shortly. So if you guys would like to stick around for that, obviously go off and do your other little things. Don't just stay on the channel for the next couple of days waiting for that other review to pop up. Go and do your things. Hang out with your friends. Do all the routines and responsibilities that you're required to do. But then, yeah, come back to this channel. Make sure, yeah, you're hitting that subscribe button down below. Making sure you don't turn on the bell notification. But the more important thing is making sure you're coming back here regularly. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.